Ms. Carpenter, I just wanted to share with you some uh, ideas for how you can use AI to help with your teaching of poetry. Um, as the students were making their sequin, it might have helped to have some adjectives. They were struggling a little bit. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with giving them uh, a list of adjectives that they can use in a sequin about a leaf, right? And then they can learn some, they won't know a lot of these words. I could say, you know, make the words more appropriate for a sixth grade class. Most of those are okay, delicate, green, they might not know tranquil, but that's not a bad word for them to learn. Um, so it's an opportunity for them to learn some new words if you wanted to. Um, and then I can, I think giving them a list like that, or, and then maybe even also having a list in front of them of um, nouns or verbs I might use in a, my poem, I'll say about a leaf. It helps to be as specific as possible when using this. Um, and then you might ask it, again, I'm just trying to scaffold for my kids a little bit. So I might say some nouns, you know, the things you want them to have in it. Uh, Cause some of them, you know, it's a, it's understandable. They're 11 and 12 and their vocabulary is still being, is still developing. So this is a, a, a beautiful opportunity and it doesn't care. I spelt that wrong. It doesn't care. Um, for nouns about leaves. So I think having, you could even just have a, a, a document that has three columns with those in it. And I know you're probably done with this assignment, but maybe if you do something else with writing poetry, asking it to give you some of the words for them to use as a scaffold is not a terrible use of this technology. Um, and of course you had a great model. I think you had a model of a sequin. I think it's, you know, it's okay. I have no idea how to spell that word. Um, it's okay to ask it to create, I just said create five examples, right? I think the more models we can give them, the better. Now, these are pretty high level models. Um, but that's one of the best ways to use this technology is to create models. And then I think I, I was as a um, assessment, it's not bad to ask for an open ended question about one of the sequins that will make students have to interpret the meaning. Okay, again, I was just writing very quickly. So apologies for my, my spelling. And it'll say, you know, Certainly, here's an open ended question. In the sequin that describes a maple, the poem mentions autumn's fiery tapestry. What do you think the phrase fiery tapestry symbolizes? That might be a nice way to open a class or to close the lesson, just to have them thinking about the poetry. You know, anytime, even when they're doing creative writing, helping them to think about it will help them make meaning of what they're learning. Um, and you can even ask it to ask it to make a multiple choice question as well, um, right? And you could even you know we you know we discussed using that to teach imagery. So you could say um, write a short poem with. Imagery. So it'll give you a little bitty poem and it'll say, what does the imagery in the poem primarily convey, right? So the idea is that you're focused on the skill when you were writing that poem. It wasn't just because it's autumn and it's fun to write poems. We were doing it because we wanted to learn how to understand and use imagery in their writing and also to be able to recognize it and think about why authors use imagery. And this is a great tool for just generating some quick assessments 
that you can copy and paste, throw on an overhead, um, put in a Kahoot or a, some kind of assessment, maybe, you know, however you want to do it. But just a quick way to close class, assess for formative assessment on the learning target, and keep it moving. I really enjoyed your class, and I really appreciated you jumping in with the strat the uh, some of the ideas we discussed.